Candace's Big Podcast. It's Build a Big Podcast, the marketing podcast for podcasters. David Hooper with you, coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee, the bachelorette capital of the world, also known as Music City USA. I call it Podcast City. We've got a lot of great podcasters here. That's what I'm talking about. Specifically, how to bring people to your podcast, make money with your message, make a podcast that people care about with a message that matters. I've got a newsletter. It is called Big Podcast Insider. It goes out every Friday morning. This is the audio edition of that newsletter. And here's what I'm talking about. The number one podcasting crutch and how to break it. Positive momentum for podcasters. Should you listen to bad podcasts? Let me throw another question to you. Should you listen to podcasts sped up? One and a half, two times, sometimes three times the speed. I'm going to talk about that. Looking for a podcast co-host? Looking for podcast guests? Got a solution for you. It is free. What a great guest host looks like. One sentence will make your podcast better. And I could tell you now, but I'm going to make you listen. (laughs) No, it's a little bit deeper than that. Also some classified ads with some things you want to be aware of. This episode brought to you by Riverside.fm. 70,000 people and companies use it. Talking about companies like Spotify, the New York Times. They know what they're doing when it comes to podcasting. And the reason companies like this use Riverside is because it makes it cheap to get great quality audio. Let me tell you a secret. This is what we used to do way back in the day. Didn't have all this digital stuff. Did a thing for NPR once. They actually sent a reporter to my house. She held a mic up to my mouth as I was talking to the NPR guy on the phone. We called it a double ender. You get that same quality for a whole lot cheaper. First of all, you can try it for free. Go to riverside.fm. They'll give you a couple hours. Take it for a spin. See how you like it. If you do, here's the discount code. Big podcast, B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. That's riverside.fm. The discount code, 15% off for life. B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. I talked about the elements of this episode. Like I said, this is based on the newsletter and there's a lot in it but I flow from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. And to make it easier on you if you're following along, because they're all about podcasting, it kind of runs together, to be honest with you. Here's what I do. I put a sound in the middle of these elements, the demarcation point, to let you know that I'm going from one thing to the next. And in honor of the Woo Girls, all the bachelorettes in Nashville, here's what it is. That's how they do it every day. You hear them before you can see them. And when you see them, let me tell you, it is a sight. Cowboy hats, cowboy boots, matching shirts. Some of them say last bash in Nash. Some of them say same forever. (laughs) Let's get to the podcasting. The number one podcasting crutch and how to break it. There's a real art to getting behind the mic and recording an episode by yourself, a solo episode. The first time you do it, it feels weird. And that's why I think more podcasters don't stick it out long enough to get better at that. If you do an interview podcast or a co-hosted podcast, the first time you got behind the mic, also kind of weird, right? It's just not natural for us. We used to have maybe the same conversations, but they're not recorded. They're not going out into the world. You bring a mic into the room, you feel like you're performing. I hope that if you're interested in becoming a better podcaster, you will give solo podcasting a shot and also stick it out. I've got a method. It's called the Podcast Sausage Factory. It takes about 10 minutes a day. You will see real improvement regardless of the type of podcast that you do, but you'll be able to do solo episodes as well. And that comes in very handy when a guest doesn't show up or a guest isn't very good or your co-host is sick. I want to get you the skills to get your message out regardless of what's going on around you. This is the only reason that I bring up tech on this podcast. If I'm talking about editing a podcast, it is not because I'm an editor or I like the new gear or the DAWs, whatever. I don't care about any of that. I care about getting your message out. If that gear, that tech, the DAW, if it's gonna help you do that, I'm gonna talk about it. Solo podcasting, doing it on your own, that is going to help you to get your message out. Relying too heavily on other people or technology, that's dangerous. I want to see you win, man. And you're in a much better position for podcasting success when you have nothing standing between you and the listener of your podcast. Now, sure, we've got the internet. You need access. Listeners need access. 
headphones break, whatever. There are a million things standing in the way of you and your listeners. But I don't want there to be extra things that there don't have to be. I've got the plan linked. It's at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Everything that I mentioned in this episode, you will find the links at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. It won't cost you a thing to do this plan. Free hosting via Anchor, the mic that you've got right now. I'm even going to give you the content that you can read, that you can respond to. I've got it all laid out. It's at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. If you have any questions about it, you can reach out to me. Twitter, Mastodon, I'm available. Those things also linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Speaking of questions, I've got a question for you. If you are not doing solo format episodes, why not? Not that you have to do them all the time. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who never, ever do them. Most of the time, it's because they feel that they can't do them. And that's what I'm talking about here. I get it. I get it. I had a weekly interview format podcast for almost a decade before I jumped in with solo episodes. And that was after I had done radio and I'd done teleseminars and live events, sales calls, a lot of speaking in my career. I was used to using my voice to get what I needed done. Still, the solo episodes, they're scary. So I'm not judging you. I'm right there with you. Or I was before I started doing them. You can do them too. It just takes a little practice, 10 minutes daily, not that hard. If you're up for the challenge, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Quick note, if you're wondering, what am I going to talk about? Well, I've got a book. It's 101 Podcast Episode Templates. It is available at amazon.com. It is 99 cents right now. It's on sale. You can download it instantly. I've got 101 episode ideas, many of them solo. They're quick. They're easy. You can start this right away. It doesn't have to be part of your main podcast. But by doing this, even if it's on a podcast that you release on Anchor and nobody hears it, it's going to make that main podcast better. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Positive momentum for podcasters. I've got a couple of strong beliefs about podcasting. One, the podcast you start isn't the one you end up with. Think about what you're doing now. Was that the plan? No. (laughs) Not at all. Never is. Even if you've got a lot of radio and podcasting experience, it always changes once you dive into it. Second belief that I've got about podcasting, if you do your job as a podcaster, not only does your podcast evolve, you do also. People change, plans change, podcasts change. If you search podcasters online, you're going to see a photo of happy people having a blast, many of them sitting in well-appointed studios, the latest gear, natural sunlight, smiles on their faces. That's not the reality of podcasting. I'm in a five by eight room right now. It is my studio. It was formerly known as a walk-in closet. When we moved in, I immediately turned it into a studio, tricked it out. You can see the photos on the Big Podcast Instagram. That's at Big Podcast One. That's the Instagram handle, instagram.com slash bigpodcast1. And it's nice and it looks cool in photos, but it is still a closet. That is the reality of podcasting. I am in a closet by myself right now talking to, I hope somebody, you obviously found yourself here, but present David, the one talking right now at this moment in time in the 5 by 8 studio that I've built, I can't be sure of that. That is the reality of podcasting. It is a little bit scary. And we've got these mental hurdles, the days when we don't feel like podcasting. Like, oh boy, got to get back in the closet. And then I got to read from the bullet points or read the script or write the script even. Got to turn my equipment on, wait for it to warm up, load up, boot up. Act like I'm excited when the last thing I feel about is podcasting right now. You can relate to that. How many interviews do you set up where it sounds good at the time when you set them up? Oh, you know, book it next week, book it in a couple of weeks. I'll see you then. And then it comes up. You're like, oh, what the, what's I thinking? You're not excited about it at all. That's the reality of podcasting. There is a lot of mental stuff that we have to work through to record a great podcast. It's often a very lonely process. And it can be good to have a reset It helps you get on track. If that sounds helpful to you, I've got another newsletter, not mine. I hope mine is a reset for you, but Butterfly Goo, you might want to check this out. 
It is a daily newsletter. It is very short. The purpose of it is to build intentionality into your day. It's not about podcasting specifically, but that intentionality, that's what you absolutely have to have when you walk into your studio. So your podcast is going to benefit. Butterfly Goo, that's the name. I didn't get the title at first, and it makes perfect sense here. It's the messy middle that happens in the process of a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. It's a quick and easy read. It is worth a look. There's not a commitment. Go there, check it out. If you like it, subscribe. If you don't like it at that point, unsubscribe. It's very easy. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com has more info. Should you listen to bad podcast? Alan Moore, he believes aspiring writers should read terrible books. And my guess is that he would think that aspiring podcasters or just podcasters in general should listen to terrible podcasts. I think that's good advice. It is hard to know exactly what you want until you have seen what you don't want or at least seen the options that are available. I was in between houses for about six months or so. Waiting for my old house to sell. Moved into a rental for six months. I had time. And I wanted that time. Because when something came available that I wanted, I wanted to snatch it up. Not only did I want to be able to do that financially, I wanted to know that I was making the right decision. So I looked at a lot of houses. When it comes down to it, I want to know that I'm making the right decision. I think that's helpful with any kind of creative endeavor. See all of it, man. See all of it. Listen to all of it. And I want to see it in the most authentic form. That's why when I listen to podcasts, good, bad, or ugly, I'm listening at one times the speed. I know a lot of people think more is more. Well, two times the speed, I listen to twice as many podcasts. Well, yeah, maybe. But then it gets a little bit weird because you get so used to hearing things fast. When you're talking at a normal speed, one time speed, it seems that you're doing slow. You start to talk faster. We get used to things, you know. We get used to things as we're hearing them. You ever met somebody with an accent? Like, oh man, that's a crazy accent. I would never be able to understand that person when in five minutes you understand the accent, not thinking about it at all. You understand the person completely. When it comes to consumption for podcasters, I think more is more. Listen to as many different podcasts, as many different formats as you can. That's how you know what you've got is working or not working. And if it's not working, somebody else has a better idea. Borrow it, put it on your podcast. I've got more information, got that video. It's linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Looking for a podcast co-host? Looking for a podcast guest? I've got a service for you. It's called Polywork. It is the place to discover new opportunities and collaborate with other professionals, such as co-hosts, such as people who want to be on your podcast. Or if you want to be on other people's podcasts, Polywork is great for that as well. You can partner on side projects, beta test new apps, Whatever you want, Polyworks got it. It is where people go to connect. And I know this sounds like an ad. It's not an ad. <laughs> a friend of mine told me about it. I thought it was pretty clever. I know a lot of people are looking to guest on podcasts. And this is how it came up. We we're having a discussion. Somebody else in the conversation mentioned, maybe I should get a booking agent. Get somebody to do this booking for me. So he said, no, no, Polywork. I've gotten some great podcast guests and I've been a podcast guest because of it. Definitely check it out. I've got it linked. It's at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. What a great podcast co-host looks like. When you're on Polywork looking for co-hosts for your podcast, consider these strategies. You want to focus on what you are good at, so look for a co-host with complementary skills. There's no reason to duplicate skills. For example, if you're into research and interviewing, find a co-host who's great at editing and production. I've listened to a lot of podcasts. More is more, what I was just talking about. One of the things that I have found that does not often work is when you have two people, co-hosts, that share the interview duties with one guest. I love co-hosting. I think co-hosting is a great, great thing. But when it comes to interviews, those are better done one-on-one. How did I learn that? Listening to a lot of bad co-host interviews. That's the kind of thing that you learn from listening to different podcasts. And that is the kind of thing that you want to think about when you are doing your own co-hosting. Do not get a co-host that is a duplicate of you. And let's say maybe that co-host that's doing the co-hosted interview with you, that co-host isn't a good interview. Well, then it's a little bit weird. 
It's like having one big bass drum and one little bass drum on the double bass drums. Boom, 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 boom. Doesn't sound good, man. It sounds weird. You're going deep with your questions. Then your co-host comes in. Well, John, tell me, are you wearing boxers or briefs? <laughs> sound like a morning show host or something. No, no. You don't need somebody to mess you up in your interview. And you don't need somebody to mess you up in getting your podcast out. If you're good at the research, if you're good at the editing, wherever you're good at, find somebody who's not good at that stuff and good at other things. Those are the best kind of co-host relationships. Here's something similar that you do want, though. You do want to make sure that you've got a similar vision for your podcast, having a clear idea of what you want to achieve with your podcast and making sure your co-host is on the same page will help you avoid later disagreements. Something I've become more open to recently is finding somebody with a different perspective. Not that you want to argue all the time, but somebody who's not going to duplicate exactly what you're saying. If I said the sky is blue and there are clouds in the sky, I don't want my co-host saying, yeah, man, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. You got a blue sky and clouds in it. Yeah, that's right. Boring, boring. Bring somebody who's going to bring in a little bit of tension. Because we're in the entertainment industry. We're trying to make people think, right? You don't want to bring a yes man. Now, I'm not saying you got to have somebody who's disagreeing on every single thing that you do. The sky is blue and there are clouds in the sky. No, it's not. Kind of kills it. Maybe somebody's going to bring in the gray. That will force you to go a little bit deeper. That's how you'll have those interesting discussions. That's going to make your podcast better. That diverse co-host, that's also going to bring you a diverse audience. It's going to pull from a bigger pool of people. A couple more thoughts for you. Be open to collaboration. If you're not willing to work with a co-host, what's the point of having one? Maybe you want that yes man. Like Ed McMahon. (laughs) Hey-oh! Just agrees with everything. (laughs) Brilliant. (laughs) Maybe that's what you want. Maybe that's the bit. All right, great. I found that most partnerships, there really is one person driving it. And I think that's fine. But if you're looking for complete control, co-host, probably not for you. Also, don't be afraid to try out different co-hosts. It's important to find the right fit for your podcast. That might take some trial and error. I was on Dave Jackson's podcast a couple of weeks ago, Ask the Podcast Coach. I filled in maybe three times. Jim Cullison is the normal guy. They've been together for years doing a co-hosted thing. Occasionally when Jim is busy, Dave will bring in a different co-host. It's not just me, it's other people. That keeps things fresh. And you can do that anytime. If you've got that solo episode that you're doing, bring in a co-host every once in a while. That's going to keep your podcast interesting. It's going to bring new people in. It's a good time. If you want to share your thoughts with me, you want more thoughts on it, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. One sentence will make your podcast better. Austin Kleon. He's got some related thoughts on this. Have you read his book, Steal Like an Artist? Great stuff, man. Really interesting format for a book too. These square books. He can draw things out, sketch kind of a graphic that explains what it is that he's talking about. Anyway, really smart guy. He's got some thoughts on one word that can make something better. I'm going to talk about one sentence. In podcasting, we call this a focus sentence. That is something that definitely will make your podcast better. Transom is some good examples of this. One of my favorite ones. Focus sentence this is. I'm doing a story on X. And it's interesting because why? I'm doing a story on drag queens. And it's interesting because Tennessee just passed a bill which makes performing drag a felony. True or false? Yeah, it's true. And because of that, there's going to be a lot more interest in the podcast, the podcast and the stories that you tell within it. You're running up everything against somebody getting a felony for doing drag it's going to get you a more interesting story. I'm doing a story on child beauty pageants, and it's interesting because these are basically drag queens, but they're four years old. (laughs) I'm giving you all sorts of ideas for your podcast. Anyway, I'm doing a story on X, and it's interesting because why? And every time you bring a guest in, every time you start an episode, every time you start a segment, within the episode run that back i'm doing a story on x and it's interesting because why that one sentence that's going to make your podcast better 
Every time I walk into an interview, I've got a clipboard with topics that I want to talk about. At the top of it, there is a bio. I would also put something like this at the top of it. I'm doing this interview with blank, my guest, and it's interesting because blank and keep hammering away with that with every single segment that I start with every single question that I ask. You want more thoughts on that? You want to get more of these focused sentences? I've got them linked. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Got some classified ads for you. Swell AI. You can use Swell AI to automate your podcast episode summaries, timestamped episode highlights, and long form articles based on the content of your episodes. I've been blown away by this thing. I can upload something like this podcast, the one you've just listened to. Swell AI will give me a 1900, 2100 word article. It gives me episode timestamps. Every time you hear a, it knows it. It knows it. And it will say classified ads. One sentence will make your podcast better. It knows it automatically gives me the timestamps, gives me great episode titles. It gives me LinkedIn summaries. It is well worth looking at. I've got it linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Audio. Where do you think the comes from? A lot of times it comes from audio. Thousands of high quality songs for you to use for your podcast. Also sound effects, new music added daily and new sound effects added daily as well. It is a great service. They are located here in Nashville. There's different music on this service than you will see elsewhere. Not just country, by the way. And more than just Bachelorette sound effects. <laughs> it's not just local. They've got something for everybody. A lot of YouTubers love this thing. High quality sound. It's going to make a difference in your podcast. You can check it out at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Audio. That is it. Another episode of Build a Big Podcast, the marketing podcast for podcasters. Thanks for being here with me. If you want to make sure that you do not miss an episode, I don't want you to. I mean, I got to be honest with you. That would break my heart, man, if you missed an episode of this. So don't, don't let me down, man. And here's how to make sure that you don't. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. I've got three buttons there for you. You'll recognize them because they are how you listen to podcasts. One for iPhone, one for Android. I've got an RSS feed if you're old school. And I've got a QR code. You can scan that. It takes the podcast from my computer to your phone in an instant. Whoop, just like a woo girl hitting another drink. Some people say it's magic. I don't know. Maybe it's just like these woo girls. I see them going crazy here in Nashville. Next thing I know, they're getting married, settling down, going to the suburbs, voting Republican. Who would have thought? It happens. That same magic, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Scan the code. You get the podcast delivered to your phone. You can take me wherever. In your car, at the gym, one headphone in, in school, in church, listen to me then. Doesn't matter to me. I'm not going to judge you. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Thank you for listening to Build a Big Podcast, and I will see you on the next episode.